Oh, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Is this recording? Oh, I didn't even realize. How are you all doing today? Um, I am still surprised that Hieronymus Grabener has invited me to tea in his rooms. The gap between this episode and the last episode was purely because I was completely shocked by this um, revelation here. So let's go ahead and let's get on with it a bit more, shall we? Uh, that looks a bit glitched. Uh, that's fine. It's hard to decide how to think about him, how to address him. When he came up in conversation, which wasn't often, my parents always used his full name, not just any Grabener. That Grabener. Using his first name at all would be too familiar here. I'm not sure most students would even know what it is. But Professor Grabener feels wrong to me as well. That isn't his whole identity, and it's certainly not why I'm visiting him now. Grabener's rooms are just that, a set of old rooms a set of rooms in Old English style, or at least more Old English than the rest of Iris Academy. Four poster bed, bookshelves, and other furniture in dark wood. He's had more than enough years to- whoops, that fell off my table. He's had more than enough years to adapt this place to his own design. I wasn't sure if he was serious about the tea, but he has a tray set out with a silver teapot, scones, and thick pastry cubes that must be a miniature beef wellingtons. At home, any gathering would begin and end with coffee, but my family training has concluded at least some familiarity with the British afternoon tea. Has included, sorry. I'm a little bit out of, pra out of practice, okay? It's been about a month since I did the last recording. Unsurprisingly, he is buried in a book when I make my entrance. Ah, there you are. I have the feeling he isn't sure how to address me either. None of us want to get into the habit of using names that would be hard to explain. So. How are your studies progressing? Shouldn't he have a good sense of that already, as a professor? But I suppose he needs my viewpoint. Uh, yeah, it's going great. Everything's going great so far. Hmm. He sips his tea. Well, this week you have experienced the hallowed Iris Academy tradition of freshman initiation. What did you think of it? Um, I think it was a lot of fun. I think we had a pretty good time overall. Lots of silly things happened, which makes memories. And no one's going to object to the party and gifts. So, you consider this to be a worthwhile practice? Sure, why not? Perhaps you should say as much to your parents when you next contact them. I thought you were contacting them. Do you think they would entrust their only son's welfare entirely to me, without verification? Use whatever channels seem appropriate. Write to them, if you must, they expect to hear from you. Considering that this man probably hadn't spoken to his own family in ten years. But he's right. I should send a message home. After I finish my tea. Now you see, that was a pleasant conversation with Gravener. Well, mildly pleasant. It's not... wasn't... terrible. <laughs> I'm trying to, to upplay Gravener here, but the best I can feasibly do is it was a conversation and no yelling was committed. <laughs> I think that's basically how it goes. At the end of the week, yada yada. Okay, so I have some notes here because this is, I got a notebook uh, document open here that says guide to lost episodes and if you recall in my previous uh, episode I had, uh, I mentioned that I lost a few recordings because of some weird thing that happened to my recording that basically froze the screen. I believe it froze the screen on exactly this screen here. So I'm just checking my, my recording software here. My recording preview is saying that it's still working. But let's take a quick look what happened. Um, thinking outside the socks. Uh, oh, Barbara came by, that's right. Poetry. Uh, Luke tried to recite a poem. Okay, cool. Uh, and I believe I also remember which path I am on. Cool. Uh, as another quick disclaimer, I've already done this entire path. I'm just replacing these current episodes before I continue recording the next path. <clears throat> On Monday morning, I hear something outside my door. I thought it was a knock at first, but there was only a single thump. Most people rap at least twice, don't they? Maybe it's just Luke and Donald horsing around. Just in case, I get dressed and go to see whether someone is out there. The least I deserve after the way he treated me. The way I did? I don't know. Oh, he sees me and cut himself off. This isn't the time. And if you just agree... No. Now please leave. You have no reason to be in this hall. Hmph. 
Sorry, old history. By the way, I believe these are yours? He hands me back a pair of my socks, and I toss them over my shoulder in my room. I'm not even going to ask. I'm here to let you know that club sign-ups take place this week on Wednesday after afternoon in the, in the gym. You don't need to schedule a special day of gym workouts. The sign-ups will be after class. What sort of clubs? Oh, anything. Some groups are traditional and held every year, like the drama club and the choir. Choral, technically. He says the last words choral, but I'm not sure what it means. Is that choral? Choral. Choral. Okay, I think that's what they're trying to differentiate here. What's the difference between a choir and a choral? I think a choir only sings religious music. I'm not sure. I'm not very musical. Or very religious. But, students can also create their own clubs around any hobby or any interest they like. Even a do-nothing club. If you can register enough members, you get official school recognition and the right to access extra equipment. I know V's planning on doing something with sports. You could make your own fancy, uh, fan club to talk about your life back home. Definitely not. Attracting that kind of attention would make it impossible to keep my secret. Which rules out the drama club as well. Think about it and let me know if you need any help with the sign-ups or form posters. I think I'd rather just see what clubs other people are running. I'm here to experience the local culture after all. Right, well, I gotta get going. He disappears before I can ask if everything's alright with him. Well, what class should I take this week? Ah, uh, let's see. Um, so, in my Guide to Lost episode, I am focusing on... Uh, green and black magic, apparently. Let's see, at Freshman initi Initiation, we've done that already. After Freshman Week. Uh, okay. Okay, I have I have the notes here about which clubs I joined. Uh, right. So, what, what is my stress level at? Four? Okay, I'm going to focus on... I believe I'm focusing on green and black. Let's see. Oh, there's a club here that, um... Right. So, green and black magic. Okay, let's... Uh, whoops. That's not how it works, okay. Uh... I have one base black magic, really? Okay, we'll just do, um, full-on black magic, I suppose. Uh... Yeah, I feel like I am forgetting something, but if that's the case... Uh... Yeah, if that's the case, don't worry, it'll only last for a few episodes. Um, have we done black magic before? I'm going. I'm not going to do this one because I don't want to get into Potsdam's voice right now. Um, learned a new spell, what spell was this? Inscription. I believe we have had inscription before, so I don't feel bad about that. Hey Charles, question for you. Can you sing? Uh, what did I say? Apparently I said I am okay at singing. Great, wanna sign up for Corral? Uh, at the activities thing tomorrow? I didn't know Donald could sing. I'd rather look over all the options before making any decisions. Yeah, that's fair. Luke can carry a tune, so Logan can't either. But his roommates and I are planning a demonstration. Does that mean you've already joined ahead of the sign-ups? Well, no, but... I knew the chorale existed, you know? I heard about the concerts from my brother, so I already planned to join. I guess he really likes music. Well... Good luck with your presentation. <laughs> he waves and goes on his way. Alright, black magic class success. Save the dragons! Ah, oh, I forgot what her name is. Susie? I believe her name is Susie. I think that is correct. Um, adorable. Absolutely adorable. Oh, my mouse disconnected. Hold on. Okay, it's back now. If you heard that window sound, that is my mouse connecting and disconnecting. I need to get a new mouse, but I need I need a lot of things, to be honest. <laughs> mouse is one of the least of my concerns. Uh, some have nothing more than a title and a clipboard for prospective members to sign their names to. Others have decorative banners or even people in costumes waving for attention. A girl from Snake Hall holds up a poster with Save the Dragons drawn in marker. I didn't think the dragons were endangered in the States. And didn't they mostly live in California anyway? I love this part. This is... Uh, this is... 
I want to say this is a, an organic way of uh, saying that um, dragons exist here. Her hallmate, Raven, is standing in the line for the drama club. No surprise there. Balthazar Brundrick, the Toad Senior, has a little table covered with dried mushrooms. Across the room, I see Virginia pulling her roommate towards a table with a sports club sign on it. I'm not sure what else I should be looking at. Oh, Charles! Hearing my name, I turn to see Minnie Cochran waving at me. Hi! I wanted to let you know I'm inviting all the freshmen to take part in Saturday's study sessions in the library. That... that's a club? It's not a club, exactly, but it's an activity. And you're not required to come every Saturday, even if you sign up. I'm promising that I'll be available on Saturdays to help my fellow students with their schoolwork. I can give tutoring in all colours of magic, as well as general study tips. You don't have to sign up. I'll help anyone who attends, even if they're not an official member. But if people join... Well, if it's an official club, then I might be able to organise extra merit projects too. Donald mentioned merits earlier, but I haven't seen any need of them so far. So, will you put your name down? Um... I am saved from having to answer immediately by the distraction of someone leaping up onto the gym stage. Donald grins at the room, pounds his fist onto his chest a few times, then takes a breath. Brooms for old shoes, pouch rings, boots and buskins. Are all the words even English? The tune doesn't sound like the American music I've heard either. Perhaps it's an old Italian song. Will ye buy any new broom? I, I don't know what the song is meant to be, just letting you know. So my cadence is probably completely off. As Donald begins to sing the verse over again, Jacob Blazing climbs onto the stage behind him and joins in, beginning each phrase as Donald finishes it. The words tumble over each other into Babel, but they form pleasant Western European style harmonies. Both Donald and Jacob have a good have good singing voices. They finish their round and make large bow large bows, and I applaud. Come this way to sign up for Corral. They wave and jump down from the stage. I suppose I should decide what activities I want to join. Not the drama club. I don't want to be on stage in front of parents at performances. The Corral might give up, uh, might give concerts too, but there I'd only be one of a group. Um. Okay, here are my notes. So, from. From the bottom up in my list, which is apparently the inverse of this one, I'm going to join the Mushroom Club. I go over to Balthazar's table. He doesn't have any fancy signs, but there's a folded piece of paper standing up behind the mushroom which reads, Nature Walks. Oh, is this a hiking club? No, it is an exploration of the wonders of nature. By hiking. By walking slowly through the surrounding forest, and examining the bounty that nature provides. I suppose he means that it's not hiking because exercise isn't the point. Well, I'm interested. I'd love to learn more about local plants and wildlife. These woods are not my woods. I have no idea what lurks in them. Excellent. Please sign here. I add my name to his list. Could you stand here for a few minutes? Uh, I suppose. Don't let anyone take my mushrooms. <laughs> he walks away into the crowd. I guess he wanted to sign up for another club, or else he needed to visit the toilet. I did agree to watch his table for him, so I'll wait. Are you the new nature guide? Uh, I expected Balthazar would be here. Uh, he had to leave for a minute. I'm not a guide. Not to this area, anyway. I'm an exchange student. I don't know why he left me at the table. <laughs> because you were there. He offers me his hand. Uh, you're a freshman, right? Alberus, junior class. It's a pleasure to meet you, I'm Charles Wynn. Go on, look after the look at the rest of the clubs. I'll stay here, I know Balthazar. Uh, you don't mind? I'm not in a hurry. Okay, thanks. If this guy was just out to steal his mushrooms, I would... Like, I'm not... Like, even if I didn't know what he looked like, even though his looks have nothing to do with it. Um, if you were to try and describe the situation to me, and I had no appearances to go on, I would probably assume that... Um, this person is probably going to try and steal mushrooms. <laughs> I don't know, I just have that suspicious nature about me personally, I think. Anyway, I'll see you when we meet. He taps the sign-up sheet. Of course, he must already be a member of this club. Well, should I try to join anything else? Uh, yes. So, one of them is, do not join Corral. The other one, however, is Sports Club. 
Oh, how did I do her voice? I can't remember. I'm sorry if my voice is that inconsistent. Welcome, welcome! Come this way to sign up for... Oh. Uh-huh. I already told Donald that he can't join. I don't want any of his friends signing up just to sabotage me either. Uh, what? That's not what I'm doing. He can't be on my side and on his side. Uh, look. All I want is to be on a sports team. Any sports team. I don't want to be stuck with nothing to do all year but kicking a ball around the gym. But kicking a ball around the gym by myself. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Look. I'm sorry about... Uh, being kind of a bitch before. I'm just so used to Donald trying to wreck everything I do. She offers me her hand. But? I assume buds is a good thing, so I take her hand in agreement. She has a pretty strong grip. Right, the sign here. We probably... We're probably meeting on Sundays, but it depends on who we get. I'll let you know. I write my name down on the form. Well, should I try to join anything else? Uh, let's see. Um, I don't know what else is here. I'll join the study club, sure. I turn back to Minnie, and I give her a smile. Okay, I'll sign up for your study club. Great, just write your name down here. I sign her sheet with a flourish. Thank you. So, like I said, we'll be meeting in on Saturdays in the school library. You don't have to come by every week, but whenever you can, I'll be there to help you with your schoolwork. Maybe there'll even be someone you can help there with their black magic. How does she know what I'm best at? That was literally my question. Well, should I try to join anything else? Let's speak with, uh, with Susie. I make my way back to the girl I saw earlier. We haven't really spoken before, but I remember her introduction from Freshman in Initiation. She's hard to forget. Uh, Suki Sato, right? Oh man. Did I call her Susie? Man. I feel like such a poser right now. <laughs> anyway. She blinks at me. Well, I think so, but doesn't everyone really? I mean, it would be strange if they didn't, don't you? Uh, yes? She doesn't even have a table here, just the poster that she's holding. She must have decided to participate in sign-ups at the last minute. Uh, so what sort of activities do you do in your club? Club? I don't own a club. I mean, the one you're trying to make. We aren't supposed to make weapons here. Uh, the student dragon club? There's a dragon club? Uh, isn't that what you're signing people up for? Signing people up would be mean. That makes no sense. But then she doesn't seem to have any sort of sign-up sheet either. Uh, if you're not signing up, if you're not getting signed up for a club, why do you have that poster? It's a sign. I give up. <laughs> Should I try join something else? Ah, uh, no, that's it. I'm not going to join Corral. I think I'll just go back to my room. All right, Black Magic Law success, and another success. Hey, Charles! I turn to see Virginia. We got the word this morning. Sports club is a go. Is go? Go. You know? Go. She puts her hands together and makes a whooshing motion like a superhero taking off. Uh, shouldn't that be sports club is going? No, it means... Uh, it's a slang thing. It means ready to go. Oh. Anyway! So, we got a bunch of people, mostly wolves and horses, and we've got permission to use the gym and request stuff. So, I need everyone who joined up to make a list of what spots they most want to play, so I can do a schedule. Write something down and get, to, uh, get it to me by Monday, alright? See ya! Alright, she bounds away down the hall, no doubt looking for the next person to notify. I guess it'll be a while before we have an actual meeting. I awaken to a knock on the door. Another Saturday morning visitor? The allowances have been delivered, so it's probably not the mail. Hey, mind if I come in? Uh, sure, enter and be welcome. Is he going to keep doing this all year? Thank you. So I'm here to give you a little advance warning about what's happening next week. Friday will be the first official examination of your spells and your problem solving skills. I can't tell you exactly what to expect, but the gist of it is that you'll be placed in a dungeon and have to find your way out. There will be some kind of obstacle, and you'll have to work out what spells to use to get past it so you can escape. If you succeed, you gain merits. If you can't make it out, you lose them. And if you get yourself hurt doing something real stupid, 
you'll probably get detention, so try to avoid that. Sometimes the professors award bonus merits for clever or unusual solutions, but don't count on it. Safer is smarter. You haven't been down to the dungeons yet, have you? Uh, no. Well, we'd better fix that. You don't want to be looking at the setup for the first time with merits on the line, do you? Uh, I guess not. Come on, I'll show you the way. We head out onto the grounds together. Now, you never know exactly what you'll find when you go down below. Levels get rearranged all the time. He points to what looks like a pair of wooden doors set at an angle. A cellar entrance. That's the main way in. The freshman section is automatically open. Don't try to open any other doors off the main corridor. They should be sealed, but just in case, don't. I am curious what sort of challenges the upperclassmen face, but this does not sound like a good time to find out. What you want to do is walk around a little, get a feeling for what the dungeon looked like and how to how to target your spells. Try a few different castings and see how your energy holds up. That will help you plan your classes for next week. You might want to pick up more spells, or you might want to build up your health and your mana. Remember, there's plenty of ways to solve every problem. Play to your strengths? You sound like Professor. Yeah, well... Uh-huh. I'm sure you'll do fine, right? Don't let me down. He claps me on the shoulder. Oh, I had I had a crazy thought. What if William, like, not William as a whole, but William, this William that we're seeing right here in front of us is actually an illusion made by Professor Grabner. <laughs> what if? What if? That would be crazy. I don't know what uh, plot-related purpose that would have. Maybe to show that Grabner has a softer side for you and he's looking out for you even though he's a... Um, He's an old Haggard. Anyway. And I'm sure many of you have just heard the word Haggard for the first time. Go on, have a look around. I'll see you later. With that, he leaves. Cool. Okay, so we are in the dungeon. The underground space is quiet and cool. I only see one door up ahead, so that must be the way. <gasps> it's her! As I'm thinking that, Barbara makes her way up the dungeon staircase. She smiles at me, but doesn't say anything. Uh, hi. She wiggles her fingers at me in a little wave. Uh, so, you've been in the dungeons? Uh, right, I guess that's a stupid question. Um, what's it like down there? She pauses. Empty, mostly. She hurries past me in a way before I can react to her speaking. Well, I guess I'd better go in. As I step onto the staircase, my ears begin to tingle. Suddenly inside my head, I hear a familiar voice. Welcome, freshman. Please pay attention to the safety instructions before you make use of the dungeons. This must be a magical message set up to play whenever anyone enters for the first time. There are no hostile creatures in your practice area, only a harmless plant that you can use for target practice. Don't feel bad about smashing it, I have many seedlings. However, it is possible for you to injure yourself by casting spells unwisely. I should drop, stop dropping things. Please consider the consequences and be careful. The message doesn't include what the consequences are. Also, there are no hidden treasures in the practice area. Experience is its own reward. So whenever you've experienced enough, you can walk back up the stairs and exit. Have fun! The message fades away. You can move around. Okay, we know how to do this. Um, cool. Uh, I, I say that, right? But... Um... Oh, it's the arrow keys? Yes, okay, it's the arrow keys, not W-A-S-D, I forgot. Okay, um... Yeah, apparently my microphone is picking up, uh, the noise of my mechanical keyboard here. Um... Oh, I'm in total darkness, huh? I can cast light here. Um, I know what it- oh, that thing creeped me out the first time, I remember. Okay, let's see what's on the floor here. As far as your eye can tell, it's a perfectly ordinary stone floor. Horus was here. So apparently these messages, uh, some of them at least, were left here by beta testers of the game, I believe. Alright, let's see. We have um, inscribed track sent. Uh, most recent creature to pass here was Charles Wynn. Oh, who was Charles Wynn, I wonder? Let's inscribe the training dummy. Let's go... Um, let's go... 
uh, P, I don't know what I'm doing, P-S-T-U, P-S-T-U, I, I think that stands for something, I hope it's not offensive, P-S-T-U, uh, nope, let's not do that one, Peace done motor, I'm literally just writing anything that comes to my head. <laughs> the training dummy won't hold still long enough. The plant waves its branches. Cool. Alright, whatever. So, we're going to head back out here. We don't really have too much more on our on our bar to use that we don't already know of. Afternoon, Saturday 21st. On Saturday afternoon, the Nature Club gathers in the woods of Iris Academy. Balthazar he isn't here yet, but I do see... Hello! Bonjour! Hi! An unusual looking student, even for Toad Hall. You're the one from Latvia, right? I'm Nara. What do you know about critters? Uh, critters? Fearsome critters and fabulous beasts. I had a kettler as a pet once. Well, sort of a pet. He lived in the woods and he was very shy. But we used to whistle at each other at night. What about you? Have you ever seen a wobbler tiger? A what? It's got a furry head and a bunny. Uh, it's got a furry head like a bunny with big teeth, antlers like a deer, tiny wings and legs like a chicken. Uh, do you mean the, the El, the Elwoodrichstein? The Elwoodrichstein? That's not quite what they look like. You have one? Can you bring it? Uh, no, I, but I want to see it. It's not that simple. Nara, don't eat the new boy. Don't mind him. He's always like that. The toad folds our arms, pouting. Nara's usually disappointed that we don't find any critters while we're walking. Everyone makes too much noise. You scare them away. So why doesn't he go out on her own then? Ah, I see Balthazar approaching. Today we will be hunting for black trumpets, also called the Horn of Plenty, or the Trumpets of the Dead. That's a kind of edible mushroom. They're not common where I come from, but I've heard of them. It is late in the season, and they are dark and hard to see, so move slowly and keep your eyes on the ground. Do we need baskets to carry them? We are not picking mushrooms, we are looking at them. There may also be turkey tails or other growths on tree trunks. They can blend in, so look closely. Alright, so which way are we going? We are looking here first. Sun sets at 7. We should be able to walk a little way before then. Apparently this is going to be a very slow walk. In any case, it is nice to be outdoors and hear the sound of the world. Cool. At night, I dream of home. I dream of grapevines clinging low to the steep slopes and mountains rising from the sea. I dream the scent of the Aleppo pine, warm and bitter and woody, and the cones rolling at my feet. I dream the footsteps of the lost wolves padding through fields, past hay drying in the Kozolchi, up and up into a village, disappearing into smoke at an arched front door. I hear the purring song of the dove, like a messenger outside my window. A messenger. In the morning when I wake, the dream still lingers in my mind. I cast a quick spirit scent spell, but there's no sign of anything hanging around. The messenger, if there was one, is gone. The message, however... From one of the drawers beneath the bookshelf, I withdraw a box of copper filigree, a deceptively strong container of metal lacework. I set the box on my desk and open it. There is nothing inside. I press my fingertip up against the interior surface and trace out a spiral pattern, then close the box. There is a faint pulse of magic. I open the box again and now... It contains a letter. Dear son, of course it's from my parents. Who else would use this method? Who else could? We've not been completely out of touch. I know Grabiner speaks with them, and this is certainly not the first time we've been apart. Still, it is nice to hold a message that they sent themselves. They comment on my magical progress so far, ask about the friends and contacts I've made, the usual sorts of things. And because this is a formal letter, they close with a reminder to always uphold the honour of our house and our line. Even in this wild and distant land, I can never truly forget that I am a prince. At the end of the week, I have a chance to review things I've learned and make preparations for the future. Well, we are at exactly 30 minutes now, 
So, thank you guys for watching, I hope you have enjoyed, and I will see you in the next episode, which I will promptly be recording, don't worry about that. <laughs> Alright, uh, see you next time, take care.